US President Barack Obama has found who's to blame for the emergence of Islamic State in the Mideast. In Syria, Assad's war against his own people and deliberate stoking of sectarian tensions helped to fuel the rise of ISIL. And in Iraq, for the failure of the previous government to govern in an inclusive manner, helped to pave the way for ISIL's gains there. The U.S. leader pointed the finger at Syria and apparently Saddam Hussein at a White House summit on countering violent extremism. We're now joined by the director of the Anti-War Answer Coalition, Brian Becker, to discuss the blame game. Welcome to the program, Brian. Is Damascus and Baghdad to blame for Islamic State? President Obama's speech was a performance of deception. It was a, an embarrassing abdication of U.S. responsibility for the rise of the Islamic State and its, po its, its U.S. military policies, the policies of officials in Washington, that's largely, and I would say primarily, responsible for the rise of the Islamic State. How could the president not mention that the United States engaged in a premeditated, unprovoked war of aggression against Iraq, dissolved its national government, dissolved its national army, funded Shiite and Sunni and Kurdish militias to fight each other as an occupation strategy, that it overthrew the government in, in Libya, the Gaddafi government, fueling uh, Islamic extremists there who then migrated to Syria, and the United States, as a matter of policy, funded and fueled armed opposition groups to the Assad government, which gave rise to and political space for and territorial space for the Islamic State. This was an abdication of responsibility, asking all of us to stick our heads in the sand and not recognize U.S responsibility here. How can we explain the lightning advance of ISIS in Iraq, in your opinion? Well, we see that the targeted communities by the central government in Iraq and the same, gov the same communities that were bombed and, and, and pillaged and, and terrorized by U.S. forces, Fallujah and the areas in the north in Tikrit, uh, allowed the, uh, a great deal of alienation from the central government and from the American occupation by those Sunni communities that then partially welcomed the Islamic State as a protector. And partly because the United States so weakened the Assyrian government through the funding and funneling of arms uh, for a civil war in Syria that the Islamic State was able to capture territory and use that territory as a base to attack Iraq. So again, we see fundamentally the rise, the quick rise, the dynamic force of the Islamic State, which is now used as a rationale for endless war by Washington. Uh, that, again, primarily is the responsibility of Washington itself. And now, after six months of fighting against the Islamic State, less than 1%, we believe, of the captured territory in Iraq has been recovered. Why are the American-led airstrikes failing, and what other options are there here? Well, you know, the United States has been bombing these towns and, and cities in Iraq for 12 years. When they take people pr uh, prisoner, as they did in Abu Ghraib, they humiliate them. Uh, they carry out the most grotesque torture and sexual humiliation. In other words, a policy that can only alienate people. President Obama said today, well, he asked the Islamic clerics to reach out and to uh, prevent Islamic extremism from spreading amongst the ranks of the young and the disillusioned and the alienated. But why are they alienated? principally because of U.S. policies, which they perceive to be a war against Islam and certainly a war against their communities. Uh, something has to give. The United States needs to pay reparations to the countries that it's targeted. The United States needs to leave the Middle East and allow the people of the Middle East to do as they have done for thousands of years before American aggression, which is to live largely in peace with their neighbors. The summit we were hearing about in Washington is designed to, quote, help prevent violent extremists and their supporters from radicalizing, recruiting or inspiring individuals. Do you believe the forum will be able to achieve that? Or anything indeed? I mean, this, this forum is just a propaganda, a publicity stunt. Uh, it's designed to make the world think that the United States actually is taking some positive measure. Uh, it's, it, can, it can have no good. 
in the last few days, the Islamic State, this monster that was created as a consequence of U.S. intervention in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, uh, this monster has created 90,000 social tw uh, tweets and social media exchanges. It's growing. Its appeal is growing. Every time the U.S. drops a bomb on another place in the Middle East, it doesn't diminish the Islamic State. It doesn't really stop the Islamic State. The U.S. isn't going to do that militarily. It actually becomes a breeding ground for more Islamic extremism and terrorism. Again, as a consequence of a U.S. policy, which can only be defined, really, as terrorist if one has an objective view of what the United States has done to Iraq, Syria, and Libya. Always great to get your thoughts. Brian Becker, director of the Anti-War Answer Coalition, thanks for joining us. Thank you.